In the annals of criminal history, Richard Evenitz remains a haunting enigma. For a staggering seven years, his nefarious exploits went unnoticed by law enforcement, leaving them perplexed as to his true nature. To those who crossed paths with him, Evenitz was simply a Navy veteran, a seemingly ordinary blue-collar worker. Little did they know that the tides of fate would soon unveil a chilling metamorphosis in the year 2002. In the grim corridors of the Spotsylvania County Sheriff's Office in Virginia, two unsolved mysteries lingered, casting a pall of unresolved grief. One was the haunting case of Sophia Silva, a vibrant 16-year-old girl whose innocent existence was shattered when she vanished from her own front porch in 1996, only to be discovered later, her lifeless, unclothed body adrift in the murky depths of a nearby swamp. The other tragedy unfolded with the abduction and merciless laying of two sisters. Adi and Kristen Lisk, their young lives prematurely extinguished, their bodies mercilessly discarded in the cold embrace of a nearby river. Within the walls of the sheriff's office, the dedicated detectives tirelessly sought justice, unaware that a turn of events far beyond their jurisdiction was about to send shockwaves through their investigation. It was an unassuming escape, a desperate bid for freedom orchestrated by a young girl from an apartment complex in Columbia, South Carolina. Little did she know that her flight to safety would serve as the catalyst that would ultimately expose the malevolent truth they had been relentlessly pursuing. The elusive serial killer, Richard Evenitz. Richard Evenitz, born on July 29, 1963, in Columbia, South Carolina, had a troubled upbringing that hinted at the violent path he would eventually follow. His parents, Joe and Tess Evenitz, struggled to provide a nurturing environment for their children. Even at a young age. Richard displayed disturbing behavior, foreshadowing the darkness that lay within him. According to a psychological study conducted by Radford University, when Richard was just eight years old, he committed a shocking act of violence against his little sister, choking her until she lost consciousness. This incident marked a significant red flag, indicating the deep-seated issues Richard would grapple with throughout his life. As Richard entered his early twenties, his deviant tendencies persisted. He delved into a series of criminal activities, breaking into neighbors' homes and forging fraudulent checks. These unlawful acts demonstrated a blatant disregard for the boundaries of others and a concerning willingness to engage in deceitful behavior. Jennifer Evenitz, Richard's younger sister, shed light on the toxic environment they grew up in. Their father, Joe, was an authoritative and controlling figure who unleashed his anger without hesitation. Jennifer revealed that their family life felt like a suffocating prison, with Joe demanding academic excellence from his children under the threat of physical punishment. This tyrannical dynamic instilled fear and misery within them, leaving lasting emotional scars. Seeking an escape from his tumultuous upbringing, Richard decided to join the US Navy. However, the military service did little to curb his deviant inclinations. In 1987, at the age of 23, Richard committed his first known sexual offense. He exposed himself to a 15-year-old girl and her three-year-old sister, a distressing act that resulted in his arrest. According to police records cited by the Washington Post, Richard confessed to his guilt. Stating that he had a compulsion to engage in lewd behavior in front of young girls. Astonishingly, Richard faced minimal consequences for this crime, receiving a mere fine and probation. By 1992, Richard had been honorably discharged from the Navy and relocated to Virginia, where he embarked on a horrifying spree of violent crimes. The transition to a new environment did little to quell the darkness within him, as he continued to prey upon innocent victims leaving a trail of destruction and trauma in his wake. Richard Evenitz's life journey is a chilling testament to the complexities of human nature and the devastating consequences of a toxic upbringing. His actions serve as a stark reminder of the importance of addressing mental health issues, fostering nurturing environments, and ensuring appropriate consequences for criminal behavior to protect society from those who may harbor dangerous tendencies. After Richard Evenitz relocated to Spotsylvania, he embarked on a new career as a salesperson, but his presence in the workplace became unsettling to his female colleagues. They actively avoided him due to his volatile temper and the distasteful misogynistic jokes he frequently made. During this period, specifically in June 1995, Evenitz committed his initial known act of extreme violence. He forcibly entered a residence and, wielding a firearm, subjected a 13-year-old girl to a horrifying ordeal of rape. The following year, in 1996, Evenitz perpetrated another heinous crime by abducting 16-year-old Sophia Silva from her own front yard. It was reported that Silva had stepped outside to study on the porch, but when her sister ventured out to check on her, all she discovered was an abandoned grape soda can and Silva's untouched class notes. Subsequently, law enforcement authorities would uncover Sophia Silva's decomposed remains in a nearby swamp. 
Disturbingly, detectives noted that her pubic area had been deliberately shaved, suggesting a callous disregard for her dignity even in death. Continuing his spree, on May 1, 1997, even it snatched the Lisk sisters from their own front yard. Tragically, the lifeless bodies of Cody Lisk, aged 12, and Kristen Lisk, aged 15, were eventually discovered in the South Anna River. Disturbingly echoing the previous case, both girls had been subjected to the same dehumanizing act of pubic hair removal. Forensic analysis later revealed the presence of fibers linking these two crime scenes, providing conclusive evidence of their connection. In 1999, Richard Evenitz returned to Columbia, South Carolina, where fate would ultimately catch up with him. It was there that he abducted Cara Robinson, a pivotal act that would ultimately prove to be the killer's downfall. In 2002, Cara Robinson was 15 years old and living in South Carolina. Known as a bright young girl, Robinson planned on spending time at a friend's house on June 24. After volunteering to help her friend with chores, Robinson grabbed a watering can and began watering flowers outside the home. Soon, a man in a Pontiac Firebird pulled into the driveway. The man stepped out of the car with a handful of magazines he claimed to be distributing around town and asked if her parents were home. Robinson said no. Abruptly, the man approached Robinson and placed a gun against her neck. He told her that she wouldn't get hurt if she listened to what he said, and he led her to the back seat of his car. There, he placed her into a large storage container, sealed the lid, and drove off. But Robinson had snapped into survival mode, taking mental notes and memorizing everything she could about her attacker. I memorized the songs playing on the radio and the serial number on the container I was in she later wrote in Newsweek. I repeated what became a mantra for me. Stay calm, gather information, escape. It kept me calm and focused. Immediately after her abduction, her friend noticed that Robinson had simply vanished from the yard. Robinson's parents quickly called the police to file a missing persons report, but police officers listed her as a runaway, according to Daily Mail. Meanwhile, in a cluttered apartment, over a span of 18 terrifying hours, Richard Evenitz repeatedly sexually assaulted Cara Robinson. He also made her watch the evening news to see if there were any reports on her own abduction. Robinson figured that if she went along with what the man said and even treated him kindly, she might survive. In between assaults, Robinson helped the man clean his apartment and talk to him about his life. In doing so, she learned he'd been in the Navy. And while cleaning his kitchen, she read his mail and studied the magnets on his fridge, memorizing the names of his doctor and dentist. Eventually, even its handcuffed Robinson back onto the bed, and while he slept beside her, she managed to remove the handcuffs from the bedpost. Finally, 18 hours after her abduction, Robinson was able to force her way out of the apartment and run out into the street to safety. After escaping her attacker's apartment, Cara Robinson ran to the nearest vehicle begging for help. Luckily, the two kind strangers inside led her into the car and took her straight to the police station. The police marveled at how remarkably calm, collected, and detailed she was in giving her account of her ordeal. She was so, so alert Lexington County Sheriff James Armet said to the Washington Post. She was able to give us information down to the exactness of what was in the apartment dot with Robinson as their guide, police officers quickly identified Evenitz as a suspect, located his apartment, and prepared to arrest the man. However, by the time they arrived, Evenitz had fled. While hiding from the police in a Jacksonville, Florida motel, Evenitz called his sister Jennifer and confessed that he'd killed someone and was in trouble, saying he'd committed more crimes than he can remember. He asked to meet her at an IHEP in Manatee County, Florida. Instead, Jennifer called the police. Police officers swarmed the IHEP and closed in on Evenitz. When he approached the restaurant and saw them waiting there, Evenitz panicked and fled, driving 120 miles an hour the wrong way through traffic. He made it to Sarasota before the police finally caught up to him. I had hoped for a trial, a chance to confront him face to face and make him witness his own downfall, Robinson passionately expressed during her appearance on America's Most Wanted, following Evenitz's death. I wanted him to gaze into my eyes, recognizing that choosing me was the gravest mistake he ever made. Following Evenitz's tragic suicide, law enforcement diligently scoured his apartment, unearthing a chilling collection of belongings belonging to both the Lisk sisters and Sophia Silva. The Freelance Star reported that among the discoveries, police stumbled upon a meticulously detailed list of additional potential victims, accompanied by their personal information. It's utterly terrifying to realize that some unknown man was meticulously observing me, confided a teenage girl whose description matched one found in Evenitz's notes, as reported by the Freelance Star. I yearned to understand why he didn't target me. Due to Evenitz's untimely demise, the exact number of individuals he assaulted and murdered throughout his dark life remains uncertain, leaving a haunting void in the pursuit of justice. Despite this setback, authorities maintain an unwavering hope that they will eventually establish connections between Evenitz and other unresolved crimes.
Among the investigations are the murder of Jennifer Odom, a 12-year-old girl who vanished from her Pasco County bus stop in Florida back in 1993, the heinous abduction, sexual assault and murder of 12-year-old Sarah Cherry in Maine in 1988. Which occurred when Evenitz was known to be working in close proximity and various other cases involving young girls. Fast forward to the present, over two decades since her own abduction, Carr Robinson has blossomed into a loving mother of two. In 2010, she proudly graduated from the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy, driven by an unyielding commitment to combat crime and safeguard others from the horrors she endured. Today, Robinson serves as a dedicated victim's advocate and a content creator on social media, sharing her own narrative and empowering others on their journey of healing. My purpose is to guide others on the path to healing and to empower them to seize control of their lives after falling victim, she eloquently penned in Newsweek. I strive to demonstrate that our past experiences do not define us as individuals.